Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well today. Hope everybody had a good day. Uh, well, again, we'll talk about the individual pivots in a second. So here is here is the, the question of the day, okay? So the March, the, the month of March, and we've been talking about this for weeks and weeks and weeks, um, put in its worst, the absolute worst uh, month in 30 years, followed by the biggest month, which was April, in 33 years, okay? And now we are kind of Mar May 11th. So from the lows of, what was it, March the 23rd to kind of present day. Now here's the question in, for, for the night. When does a dead cat bounce finally get turned into an overall full-blown market shift in sentiment, right? I think it's a fair question. I think a lot of times, when you're trading a market and there's obviously negative materialistic impact on it and obviously uh, economic and social ramifications, you can quickly see the reasoning why a group of people turn bullish or bearish. And bull market bounce, excuse me, bull market sell-offs and bear market rallies are very, very common, okay? There's, that's the, the anti-correlation to actually what's going on. But now we're kind of in a situation, if you look at the indexes today, obviously did not tell a story. Dow was down around 100 uh, at one point today, the NASDAQ composite was up 100. And if you continue to look at where these stocks are, okay, you could really see the, for, the fear of missing out crowd really chasing, okay? It didn't make a difference to what it is. Uh, for example, a stock like MRNA, which we'll talk about uh, a really big, big pivot here um, in, 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 of the day today, really, really big move. But again, you're not even just talking about stocks like this, right? You're talking about stocks like Shop, who access the debt market. You have stocks like Tesla, right? That the CEO couldn't get the stock down, okay? Um, news came out out of China, right? I think it was 68% uh, decline in China sales. So materialistic news couldn't get stocks down. Um, accessing the debt market, dilution, can't get stocks down. A virus that's been completely paralyzed, the global economy, can't get the market down. So again, the question is, when do we start calling this a bullish scenario? Okay. Now, again, obviously there is no right and wrong answer. Everything we do in trading is very, very subjective. If I think something's oversold and you think something's overbought, right? Well, somewhere in between is going to be fair value. So the idea that the market has to be identified or kind of painted in a corner for us to kind of make way, I, I think it's a very, very weird way to kind of look at the tape. And we start looking for clues because again, all we've been talking about is a linear move now off this uh, off this March 23 recovery, but now we have to start getting a little bit better, right? We have to start getting a little bit wiser. Even the most rabid bull markets, okay, um, they're not going to go straight up, okay? I think we know that. And we start to look at clues to where the market might slow down or at least put us in a situation that we can identify when buyers start to get tired. Remember, stocks don't go straight down no matter how good a market is and stocks don't go straight up, okay? It's just, it's just these are the facts, okay? And the fact that we made this really, really aggressive run, just look at, look at the cues. You're talking about it from a low of 164.93 to a high of 228 today. That's pretty epic, right? That that's really, really big, majestic stuff. And the question is, when do we finally, okay, even the most bright-eyed, optimistic bull, when do they finally turn around and say, you know what? Let me get out early before I can get out late. Or in other words, like something I've been using, saying for years, sell when I want to, then sell when I have to. And now we're slowly but surely starting to get to levels that I think the bears can defend and they need to defend. If you believe, again, this is a very, very exaggerated uh, bear market bounce, 
then these are the levels that we have to talk about, right? We got rejected off this linear regression line today on the Qs, roughly around the 228 level. So that level going into tomorrow, because again, remember, stocks trade, they don't trade randomly. They trade from supply to supply and demand to demand. So the question of, is this a continuation of a bear market bounce, okay, or more of a continuation of a V-shaped recovery, in my opinion, right, my humble opinion, I think we'll get the answers to that in the next couple of days. So if the market gets rejected back here tomorrow at 420, at 228, and we get, we caught a double top here on the linear regression line, then you have to start looking for stocks that are starting to take lows before the indexes get rejected. If you look at some of the names that are weaker, right, I'm not saying weak, there's really nothing that's weak, but if you start looking at clues to what can be pulled down tomorrow, you start looking at names that have big runs. So for example, BYND had a really, really big run. It's putting in an inverted hammer. Again, these are signs we want to watch. Boeing, after a really, really big you know, meltdown, right, into bottom support, it held, had a really good three-day run. Again, got weaker today, right, got weaker today and tested the five-day moving average. Even a stock, for example, uh, even a stock, for example, I forgot what was the symbol, uh, what was the symbol? Too low, too low. Even a stock like too low, for example, right? You have this re really now two, three monster, monster days. And again, put in this slight inverted hammer. So we have to watch names that people are starting to slow up on. Even the chasers are tired. The buyers is kind of getting a little bit more timid. And we have to start looking for stocks that didn't participate in the last couple of days uh, to the downside. Because again, the last thing you want to do is start buying into strength on levels going into supply. And again, if there is going to be more of an interpretation of a bull market V-shaped recovery than an exaggerated bear market bounce, then these levels need to be identified, right? The 228 level on the Qs, and if they do, and if they do start reclaiming and building all those levels, then the Qs go to this 230, 230, uh, 230 40s level. Any close, obviously, above that, again, this kind of confirms the whole reality that, again, we are either faced with a near-term, right, near-term dead market bounce or the start of something more. And if you look at where we are compared to the recent highs on February the 19th, we're not that far. So it's really, really important in the next couple of days, kind of for the bulls to take really aggressive control where the bears defend these levels. Again, this is, this is the last levels, guys. There's nothing left, right? There really is nothing in the, in the way from the bulls taking over this 30 and a half level and going all the way back to the, to the February 19 highs. So the bears, if they are standing behind this whole theory of an exaggerated bear market bounce, well, then they have to show up. Um, the one thing that I, I, I'm seeing that's really amazing, I mean, really, really phenomenal here, how strong these beta names are, okay? Amazon, we've been, you know, we've been discussing now for three, four days, big, beautiful move today, quite a nice trade today in Amazon. Uh, I still like it for tomorrow. Again, it all depends what the index is going to do. But again, you can see how great the chart is. Even a stock like Netflix, who's trading very, very choppy, right? You can see how big of a move today, putting this move here to this 445 level. We've been talking this thing since the 332 area from last week and now it's only a stone throws away from 52 week highs you have a stock like chipotle that we you know that we i bought this on uh i traded on friday i forgot to trade it today i know a lot of you guys did Wait a minute, we, we said this thing's going to 340 345 uh put in a high today of 943 look at shop right they accessed uh, debt, you know, they accessed the debt market a couple of days ago, getting read back to 52 week highs. NVIDIA, monster, right? I mean, there's, there's really nothing to say. And now we're starting to get that second and third wave of traders that are starting to wake up. Look at Alibaba, right? Alibaba, good bets today. Uh, you saw big bets ahead of earnings. I believe they report on Thursday. Again, very, very clear area to see if it could reclaim right in the top of the supply. Uh, you look at Roku, for example, right? It had this big, big run. Sold on Friday, uh, profit taking, and now we're literally one day away for it to go back to uh, to recent highs all the way from last week. So it's it's a tale of two cities. We're getting really, really good, aggressive, really linear, aggressive bull market action, but at the same time, we're coming up to very, very important uh, bear market kind of a bear scenario defense. So the next day or so might be tricky. Again, is there going to be uh, individual names that I really like in both directions? Absolutely. I still want to give 
uh, the Bulls kind of the benefit of the doubt uh, going to tomorrow. But again, we have to keep in mind, just, just keep one eye on the futures. If we gap up tomorrow and we start seeing lower highs and these and the QQQs get rejected anywhere, either from here or here, we, there is a good possibility they start you know, yanking the rug. Again, we'll see. I don't want to put the cart in front of the horse. But again, you have to be prepared. You have to have an opinion. You can't just go into tomorrow and say, well, Amazon's up another 20 tomorrow. Let me buy it up 20, knowing that we're going into supply. So you have to be very, very careful. Again, have an opinion. Don't guess where things are happening, right? Have an opinion. Have, it, have everything play out, let it confirm, second entries, take money along the way. And the most important thing is get out ahead, get out when you want to, not get out when you have to. So it's very, very important uh, going into tomorrow. Uh, if you look at the pivots today, again, very aggressive, guys, all across the board, even the small ones. You know, we talked about uh, TLRY uh, last week that it got rejected uh, 8, 10 a couple of times. Again, they, they came out with crappy earnings today or whatever. The stock is down after the close. But again, you know, for all you guys who traded the smaller names today, uh, A10 rejected twice on daily, uh, needs to reclaim. Uh, here was TLRY, right? So here was the TLRY pivot. Here was the A10 that kept, up, kept on getting rejected. And the stock spiked into the 840s. Again, is that good? Is that bad? I don't know. You guys trade the smaller names. I don't know if it's good or not. Uh, but again, 30, 40 cent move on an $8 stock. Again, it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, TBIO, uh, I, I, I like this. I, I like this chart. It didn't, it, it didn't, it just missed confirming. Uh, I like this thing on a $15 break. It traded as high as $14.99 today. This thing still looks good. All this thing needs is volume to get this thing going. So definitely set set and keep an alert on um, on TBIO. Uh, PayPal, I made a cup of coffee on PayPal. Uh, red to green on watch. Note this is not a pivot, just momentum. So PayPal spiked up today, went red to green. Um, I bought it and went up like nothing. It went up like 25 cents. It was just like, it was like, it was like torture. And, and this is again, my whole point of not that PayPal is a random stock, but it's not the core beta names that I trade. It's not the Teslas, not the Netflix, not the Amazons of the world. It's not the Apples. It's not the Nvidia, it's not the Roku's, right? It's a, it's a stock that, again, you know, I use PayPal, everybody uses PayPal, eBay, they had a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal birth of PayPal. Everything's great, okay? But it's still a random stock. And I bought it today. And, it, and if it was a second day play, like on Netflix or Tesla, this thing, we would have been having a conversation of five, 10 points, but it's not. And I bought the stock. It went up like 25 cents and it sat there and it sat there and it sat there. And honestly, I just got sick of it, okay? Because I was just sitting in it as I was making money in the trade. I was like, I don't even want to be in this thing. So I sold half and made nothing, like 25, 30 cents. Um... And then the rest I broke even and blah, 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 watch it go down a dollar. So again, that's my point of trading random stocks. When you trade random stocks, you don't know their tendencies. You don't know what they're capable of in your mind. You have an idea what should happen. Okay. But what should happen as we all know, and what is exactly happening are completely two different stories. Again, com you know, comparing, uh, you know, comparing swords to, you know, swords to guns. Again, you can't, it's, it's impossible to compare the two. Uh, Chipotle was great. I just missed the trade personally. Uh, Chipotle was great. Again, it broke out on Friday. Uh, I, I traded it from Friday from 9 to 9.15. That was my highest print. Today, it opened up lower, started building. 9.29 needs to build. And Chipotle exploded. Again, congratulations. I know a lot of you guys were holding calls. Uh, so Chipotle exploded. And it went right to uh, it went right to the 943 area. Uh, I took out this area here. So big 13, 14 dollar move on Chipotle. Uh, Tesla. I, I, I screwed up the trade on Tesla. Uh, I actually lost three bucks on the trade. Um, the funny thing is, I there was an area before the 811, 812 area. Okay, um, it paused there. I bought it. It went up like a dollar and change. And once it paused, I should have got out break even, but I didn't. It was so fast, so aggressive. Uh, so I wound up losing like three bucks on the first move. And then it reclaimed, right? It reclaimed 811, 812. And the stock, I mean, it really is to me, this stock really is such a beast. So it, it took about the 811, 812 area right here. And it went to 819, okay? It went to 819. If you notice here, it got rejected off Friday's high. So this area here, is going to be a very, very big area kind of going forward, okay? Uh, Roku never got down to the lows, okay? Never got down to the lows. Um, I actually like it to the upside for tomorrow. MRNA is just a monster. Um, 59, 90, 60 needs to build. Yeah, it built, okay? It definitely built. This is definitely uh, the biggest move of the day for sure. Uh, $60 right here, the first candle on $60 
went up five, and then the next candle confirmed uh, went up another three. So you got an eight dollar pivot on on that's a huge move on a sixty dollar stock. So uh, great job for all you guys who took that as well. Uh, and I said I said sixty two is the first supply. You figure two dollar move on a sixty dollar stock is good. Apparently not. Uh, Netflix again four forty two last week's highs needs to build. Uh, here was Netflix. Uh, here was Netflix, took out the 42, uh, went to 45. Again, choppy trader, but again, it is what it is. Uh, Amazon, yeah, this is where I got long, uh, 2397. Stock is a beast. I mean, really, really is a beast. The, the key of, of what we saw on Amazon for today was it finally got above that 60 minute supply that we saw. As you can tell, it put in a high today of 2420. I think tomorrow, if it starts remounting this area here, I, I think there's a shot. I mean, I think there's a shot at C's, you know, 2450s. Again, if you look at uh, the call buying today, you saw the weeklies coming in at the 2500, 2550s, 2600 even. I think it's a little exaggerated, but again, uh, the scoreboard is the scoreboard. So Amazon obviously take on the way up as well. Uh, nice spike there as well. Chipotle, 940 on deck. Um, oh, guys, just as a, a quick shout out, I, I think this is very, very important. Um, again, this is kind of my whole point of traders developing early. OK, uh, there was a gentleman who started with me uh, two years ago. His name was Derek, or as he likes to call himself, Choo Choo. There's no way in hell I'm calling, calling a grown man Choo Choo, but he <laughs> to each his own. So here is kind of like the journey of what his experience were was, okay? Not necessarily of, hey, Dan, this is a great, you know, pivots. And then, you know, listen, obviously he's trading the pivots. He's trading the PS60 theory. But what I like about this post was it has nothing to do about how much money he's making. It's basically his development, okay? It's his development from the word go, from funding his first uh, brokerage account to kind of, you know, getting his feet wet with the pivots, uh, with this PS60 theory and kind of going through that that longevity, right? That longevity baby steps, okay? Opening up an account, funding your account, uh, buying into a process, okay? Getting comfortable with that process and now starting uh, to profit from it. And, and it, the point of this was after a while, guys, and I've been saying this for years and years, okay? You don't need anybody, okay? Technical analysis is what you need is it's all you need okay and this is a phenomenal post to kind of see because now after two years he's self-sufficient again is that abnormal i think it is right i think two years is an incredible um ex incredible feat to be self-sufficient uh, after two years but i i think again what this really does prove is everybody is trading on their own schedule okay when you're a light bulb is going to go on. That's when everything is going to click for you. It's not a race. There are no style points. There's no right way or wrong way to do it. It's all about your individual journey, uh, your ability to kind of stay focused and stay disciplined. So kudos to Derek. Great job. Uh, really, really great job. I'm very, very proud of you. Just to kind of see where you started to kind of where you are today uh, is pretty remarkable. Um, and that's about it. Oh, and, and Lululemon. Uh, Lululemon. Uh, big move on Lululemon, uh, 238 and a half, 239 new highs. Here was Lululemon, right? Here was Lululemon. Here's the 239, and the stock went to uh, almost 247. It's a really, really huge move uh, in Lulu. So that's it, guys. That's it. A uh, really good, you know, start to the week. Uh, again, good value. That's the name of the game. Uh, good. Um, good rotation from stock to stock, which is very, very important. But the most important part is, again, going into tomorrow's session, uh, I do want to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. But again, I do want to acknowledge that the cues are in a very, very delicate spot because if they get rejected again into daily supplies, we are going to roll over. So guys, stay focused. Uh, again, stay patient. Your time will come. If you're a new trader, again, it's all baby steps. Don't trust um, you know, don't trust the idea that you need to learn everything today. It's all about your comfortability, right? Your comfortability and your ability to process the proper information. Guys, God bless, and I'll see you tomorrow. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.